can take you anywhere Turn the pages and you'll be there Come on, join us, you'll see We're reading with Kevin Lee Hi, friends, and thank you for joining us for another Read with Carolee. I am your host, Carolee, and I'm here to bring you another fabulous author and a wonderful book that they have in store for you. Today, we have Miss Shanita Stone, and she is here to give us a very special story, but before before she goes ahead and reads for us, let's remember to hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you won't miss another author that is coming by to visit with us. So, Ms. Shanita, welcome. Thank you, Ms. Carolee. I'm happy to be here with you. Yes, I'm so happy to have you. And today you are reading us a very special book um, called Caleb Has Something to Say. And I am so glad to have you read this book and have us get into it. But before you do, could you let us know where you're reading to us from? Yes, ma'am. Today, I'm actually reading from my hometown, which is Danville, Virginia. But me and my family live in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, wow. Yes, I, I'm <laughs> up a little bit north in, Dan in, no, no, in <laughs> northern Virginia. <laughs> um, so I am very, like I said, I'm very excited for you to read this story. And I'm going to let you get into it. And then we'll come back and chat. So <laughs> without further ado, could you get right into reading to us? Caleb has something to say. Okay, thank you. Caleb has something to say. My name is Caleb and I am five years old. While I was being born, my brain got hurt really badly. The doctors told my mom and dad that I would live with something called cerebral palsy. For me, that means sometimes I will do things differently than other kids around me. One thing that I do differently is how I communicate. I am nonverbal. That means I do not talk. But just because I do not speak my words does not mean I don't have anything to say. When I am happy, you'll know it. My smile will be so big and wide, you'll see all of my teeth. Like when my dad comes in from work and says, hey buddy, as he pats my chest, I get so excited that he is home. It makes me laugh and giggle. Sometimes I just really need a hug. I might have a tummy ache or maybe my body has tightened up too much and I can't relax. All of these things can make me feel sad. You'll know I'm sad because my shoulders will slump. My head will hang low. I'll whimper a little, or maybe even, <gasps> what? <laughs> I'll cry out loud, and my sister always comes to help me. When it's time for me to eat, you'll know. I will open and close my mouth, chomping my teeth. I'll smack my lips to say, hey, I'm ready for something yummy. And if it hits the spot, like the cotton candy my tea mine gives me, I'll keep turning my head to you, letting you know, I want more, please. Just like you, there are times that I don't feel like talking or I just need a break. When that happens, I may turn my head away like this. And if you don't get the picture, then I'll just close my eyes like this. People will think I'm sleeping, but not my mom. She says, Caleb, I know you are awake. And she's right. 
My mom also knows when I'm tired. When she picks me up, I melt right into her arms. She kisses my forehead as she rocks me and hums the most beautiful tune. I start to have big and deep yawns. My eyes begin to blink slower and slower. And before you know it, I'm having sweet, sweet dreams. And that is the end. Yes, that is such a sweet book about um, Caleb and about uh, the process of dealing with cerebral palsy. And some people may just, they don't understand. And this gives a better understanding of this um, symptom. So thank you for writing that book. So, okay, what... I, I, I could kind of imagine what your reasoning for writing this book um, was about. So could you tell us more about Caleb and what inspired you to write this book? Um, Caleb is the firstborn to my husband and myself and uh, learning about his development and then later on about his diagnosis of cerebral palsy really put us in a place to say, okay, what can we do to best support him in everything mm -hmm. across the board? And so um, I started building a library where I wanted him. And at the time his sister had come along too. I wanted mm -hmm. them to see themselves in books. I wanted them to see themselves represented in the stories that they were reading. And it was so easy for me to find books for my daughter about hair and her skin and just things like that. But when it came to finding books for Caleb, I just, I was not finding them. And so mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Then we're just going to have to write our own. And um, that's what I did. And just the inspiration was for him to see himself. And it turned into something so much bigger because I found other people saying, hey, I've been looking for a book kind of like this too for my child or my grandchild, yes. my friend's daughter and son. So definitely bigger than me, but that's what started it. Yes, that's, you know, absolutely a great thing to do. You know, you start to write it for yourself or for your child, but you mm -hmm. see that there's just so much, there's so many people that yeah. may not have thought, okay, let me write a book, but mm -hmm. they want to find this material out there. And that's exactly what this platform is about. That's exactly what Read With Carolee is about, about, you know, being able to have children find books where they can see themselves in the books. Now, um, well, were there any books that inspired you when you were growing up? or, you know, help you see yourself in, in books? Um, you know, I, I was thinking about that and I can't recall one specific book that really ignited my passion for reading. Mm -hmm. um, but I can think about just like the act of receiving a book. Um, I mm -hmm. had someone very special in my life that made that an exciting thing for me. Um, she was my grandmother's best friend and cousin, and she was like a second grandmother to me. And I called her Aunt Savannah. And every Sunday after church, she would go to her car and bring me a little brown paper bag. And in there would be a piece of fruit, uh, some kind of candy or treat, like a sweet uh -huh. treat, and a um, little golden book. And it was just like an event. It was like every Sunday I knew I was getting this bag. And of course I wanted the treats, not so much the apple, mm -hmm. but like I wanted the sweet treat, but I was always excited about getting the book. And that really just started my love for reading and keeping books around me and ultimately making sure that my children had that same excitement about it. Yes, that, that is amazing. So you said that, you know, you're, you were building a library for both your daughter and your son. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Do you have any other books that may be in store? I do. Um, we yes. are out with Caleb, but we are definitely going to get into the world of Carter, and that is his sister. Um, okay. She is our, she, she's our visionary. She imagines things. She has tons of stories and all these things going on around her that you have to, you know, look closely to see what's happening. And uh -huh. so I think 
she's definitely going to offer me a lot of inspiration for just a lot of imaginative books, very fun and playful books. And, um, and definitely books that build her up as, yeah. you know, a, a little girl, a little black girl, um, someone who's just learning and, you know, figuring out life at four years old. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. So, you know, we, we know that there, there are, many different things and many different avenues in which we can go to writing um, our books. So was writing, Caleb has something to say. What was your process with that? How long did that take you? It actually took me, um, it's, it's funny because I, I had it dancing in my head for like months. And I would mm-hmm. just tell my husband, oh, I have this little idea about a book for Caleb. And I would just kind of really recite it to him without even having ever written it down anywhere. And so finally, um, I went to a cafe one Saturday and I sat down and I wrote it out. This is after maybe like two or three months. I said, let me just get this out of my head and on paper. And that was the week before the world shut down. It was the week before the schools closed. And, and so the, I I was so excited about writing that Saturday in the cafe. I came home and I told my husband, I was like, I'm going to do this every Saturday. Like, I want to take some time and (laughs) write every Saturday. Wow. I was like, you know what? I'm still excited about it. So I'm still going to continue this process. And um, Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was my small blessing in disguise because I had the time to really focus and, you know, go through the process and not leave it hanging and forgetting about it. I was able to stay on task and get it done. And we had Caleb pass something to say by June of 2020. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) Well, that is exciting. We could, we got to get you a little cafe out your door or something. (laughs) That you could keep on writing. Oh my God. Well, Shanita, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for sharing. Caleb has something to say. And I am so glad that we've been able to have you on. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. I have enjoyed talking with you. Yes. And to our friends at home, thank you for joining us. Uh, We know that there are so many more books that we can bring to you to help you to see the world in a much different way. And we so thank you for you sharing your time with us. And we just want you to continue to do that. So remember to hit subscribe and ring that bell so that you can be notified of when we are coming back. So until next time, I am Carolee, and I thank you for joining us for Read with Carolee. And remember to always grab a book and read. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.